Welcome to the Lost Media Chronicles, a show which discusses various lost movies, music, art, you name it. Well, today's episode was made out of frustration while making my most recent Adventures in Vinyl Land episode. My most recent episode is about The Velvet Underground and Nico, one of my all-time favorite albums. One of the things I like to do for this show is include live footage from the era I'm talking about. Unfortunately for the Velvet Underground, live footage is really hard to come by, and it's considered, in many cases, lost media. Naturally, I spent several hours searching for this media, and I didn't come up with very much. As a matter of fact, it was so interesting, I thought, why not just do an episode about that to include along with my episode of Adventures in Vinyl Land? So here you go. This is the lost footage of the Velvet Underground. Now before I go too far into this, live music is a bit of a gray area when it comes to lost media. On one hand, most bands have surviving recordings of most of their songs in a live setting. On the other hand, some other bands never did live performances to begin with, or they're no longer alive or together for us to see them perform. It's hard to determine what's worth classifying as significant when it comes to this field. However, if you've heard some of the Velvet Underground stories and knew how important they were, you'd probably see why this is so heavily sought after. The Velvet Underground were one of the first art rock bands out there, opening the door for experimentation. They were loud and sung about controversial subject matter that influenced many groups to come. They were most famous for being Andy Warhol's Darling Band. Warhol discovered them and built up an infamous reputation that did nothing but boost their legacy. They never had a hit single, but they helped the formation of punk, dream pop, noise rock, and psychedelia. Now like many bands, the Velvet Underground's lineup had some significant changes. Viola player John Cale would be replaced by guitarist Doug Yule. There was even an album where Yule was the only remaining member of the band. However, if you're one of those crazy people that for some sick twisted reason likes the Squeeze album, you're a traitor to the fan base. The Velvet's most famous lineup included German singer Nico. Nico was forced onto the band by Warhol, and they always resented that fact. The entire production of The Velvet Underground and Nico contains arguments between Nico and virtually everyone else. She was seen as unnecessary for the band, but they also didn't want to lose their support of Warhol. I go more into detail about that in my Adventures in Vinyl Land episode on the album. Reed forced Nico out of the band in 1967 when he fired Warhol as manager. After a few years, they realized they took her presence for granted. Nico went on to have a critically acclaimed solo career, and the Velvets continued to make loud, controversial music until they broke up in 1971 due to executive meddling. Lou Reed and John Cale also had successful solo careers. Now, there were many efforts throughout the years to have a Velvet Underground reunion. In 1993, over 20 years after the breakup, the band had a successful reunion tour, but there was one problem. Nico wasn't there. In 1988, Nico had a mild heart attack while riding her bike, causing her to fall unconscious. A passing taxi driver had trouble admitting her to a hospital, and she was misdiagnosed with heat exposure. She died later that night due to improper treatments. The Velvets were visibly touched by her absence. Her vocals for All Tomorrow's Parties, The Fatale, and I'll Be Your Mirror were all done by John Cale, sometimes tearfully. It's been a huge treasure hunt for Velvet Underground fans to find live footage from their heyday, especially footage including Nico. The band was never hugely popular, mostly leaving its mark in the underground. It wouldn't be until the late 70s when they really started gaining recognition. Famous artists from the era, such as the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, already have scattered live performances, so smaller acts like the Velvets are even harder to come by. But even by obscure 60s artist standards, live VU footage is hard. I had an easier time finding footage of Tim Harden and Tim Buckley, both of which are also pretty obscure from the day. The footage of the Velvets is out there, but it's extremely hard to find. Many of the performances with Nico were done in the long period of time between the recording of the Banana album and its actual release, so publicity was still very low for the band. Nobody had filmed the band much during this period, and Nico would no longer be with the band by the time they were getting any sort of publicity. All of these factors combined make finding live Velvet Underground footage a bit of a bitch. Now, there are some clips available. 
We have the famous Warhol shot footage from 1966. But the camera doesn't spend much time focusing on the band, seeing as Warhol was a stickler for being pretentious as shit and focused on a child in the audience more than anything. The audio is also horrendous and it's hard to make everything out. Another clip is from Warhol's The Exploding Plastic Inevitable, which focuses more on the dancers than it does on the band. There was one particular performance where Lou Reed fell ill and was filled in by Kale with the rest of the Velvets shuffled around in their roles, including one person filling in for the drums. Once again, this has terrible audio. The most commonly available footage is from the 1993 reunion. There was a full concert recording that was released in 2003 from this era, as well as several bootleg recordings that are varying in quality. The saddest of these performances was the one done at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1997 after the death of Sterling Morrison. That's nice. I said goodbye to my friend last night. I said goodbye to my friend last night. I saw his face and cried last night. I wiped the tears from my eyes. Now, none of these are as interesting as the performance at the Bat the Clan in 1972. Strangely enough, 1993 wasn't the first reunion of the Velvets. For one night in 1972, the band got together and performed a few songs at the Bat the Clan Theater in Paris, France. But there was one thing that makes this performance extra notable. This reunion included Nico, who performed some of her own original songs as well as her songs with the band. The performance floated around in audio form for decades, receiving an official release in 2004. However, a few years later, a French university uncovered some footage that was from that same performance. Not only is the footage crystal clear, but so is the audio. Unfortunately, this footage only included three songs in an interview, but it's widely believed that the entire performance was caught on tape. It's not known if the remaining footage was just simply unreleased or if it's still lost. Some fans even claim to have seen an extremely rare bootleg with the entire video performance. If this is true, this might be the only full, high-quality Velvet Underground performance featuring Nico in existence. Now, as I said earlier, live music can be a bit of a gray area. There has to be something that can't be recreated for it to be considered lost, as well as proof that it was ever recorded. I think that rare footage like this is enough proof that there probably exists more like it out there somewhere. But why is it important? Well, most influential artists from the 60s have tons of surviving footage, but the Velvets have so very little. This is such an influential and important band that having footage helps us get more context as to where the band were in history. They played a seminal role in development in popular music. Therefore, lost footage like this is considered priceless. Join me next time when I talk about an early Disney character and his lost cartoons. It's animation related, so I know a lot of you guys will like that. See you later. Brett says bye to you.